The reason for this video is to try and define street photography. I was at the photography club recently and someone asked me, you know, what I was doing and I explained, you know, I used to shoot festivals and fairs and uh, now I'm doing street photography. So they said, well, what is it? I didn't really do a good job of explaining it. So I said, you know what? I'll make a video and I'll, uh, I'll go on the internet. I'll look for uh, Wikipedia. I'll look at Google. I'll go to YouTube videos and I'll get you the answer. But it didn't happen that way. <laughs> it turns out there's differences of opinion on what is street photography. Uh, a consensus from some of the old timers that it is this. It's capturing people in public areas, streets, malls, parks, benches, showing mood or emotion. It's also spontaneous. It's unplanned, no props or setups. And it's candid. No eye contact that changes the mood or emotion. That's kind of like the basic definition that some of the old timers have been using. And I'm an old timer, so I kind of like that. But on the other hand, I've looked at some videos and uh, there's one gentleman, he goes to Central Park in New York and there's a place where they're uh, taking, uh, you know, the guys are playing chess and checkers on these little tables. He sees a guy sit down and... Uh, Nobody's sitting across from him, so he goes over and he says, Hey, you mind if I join you? And the guy says, No. So he sits down, he gets a conversation going, and pretty soon he says, Hey, you know, I'd like to take your picture. Is that all right? So he brings out his camera. The guy says, Sure. And he takes poses left, right, up, down. He gets some good pictures. I didn't think that was street photography because it wasn't spontaneous. It wasn't unplanned and uh, it wasn't candid. He made eye contact. But the guy called his video street photography, so that's another definition. Same thing in California. A young guy positions himself along the beach where the, the uh, young girls are coming by with skating and they're wearing thongs and short shorts and they're looking great. He stops a couple of them and takes their picture and he says, Hey, over there is a, is a mural with the... With the Palm trees, how about skating over there? And Yeah, sure, so they skated over. He takes their picture, he poses them, leg up, leg down, sideways, whatever. He gets some good pictures. But is that street photography? I don't know. He called it street photography, but I'm not sure in my definition whether it is or not. Then there's another example where two photographers go to a produce market. And the first guy... He walks up and he sees a lot of nice colored produce and he sees the person selling but there's no customers so he walks up and he says, hi, nice produce, mind if I take a picture of you and your produce? And the lady says no and he gets a nice smile, takes his picture and then later on another photographer comes by, he sees the exact same scene but he says, you know, it would be a better photo if I could get people. So he, he kind of stalled, he walked around, he walked away, he walked back and Pretty soon, the seller had a customer. And when they were engrossed in conversation, he kneeled down, got a picture of the produce in the foreground, and the two people chatting in the background took the picture, and I think that was a better picture, because it was candid, no eye contact, spontaneous. <coughs> then there was a, a guy teaching photo street photography, and he showed the audience a picture of a, a manhole cover, a pretzel, and a cigarette butt. And I looked at that, and I honestly didn't think much of it. It just was nothing to me. So he explained, he says, well, the reason I took this picture was my father died at a young age, and he was uh, worked for the Department of Public Works, and so he was always in manholes, and there was the manhole. And the pretzel reminded me of the time he would take me to Center City, Philadelphia, and we'd share a pretzel together. And the cigarette butt, well, he was a chain smoker, which probably killed him. But anyway, those three things reminded him of his father, which brings up the subject of whether you're doing street photography for yourself or for an audience. If you're doing street photography for yourself, if you like it, good, it's done. That's it. 
But if you want to see, if you think about an audience, then you got to be a real critic. You can't just put anything out there. You've got to be a critic. And uh, that's really a difficult thing. You might take a hundred shots. You might get eight or ten that you like, and then you look them over another day, and you cut out one or two more, and pretty soon you, you end up with like one or two. And it's really tough, but that's that's what, it's hard to be your own critic. So sometimes it's good to have someone else, you know, look on and tell you what's good, what's bad. Um, following this, I have three short videos on kind of like the history, some of the good guys in street photography. Henry Cartier-Bresson is one, Gary Winogrand is two, and a person that no one knew anything about till 2009, and that was Vivian Meyer. And should you want to see some of my stuff, I don't know, maybe you will, maybe I won't. But here's my, here's my webpage. If you go to that webpage and you, and you go down to the bottom of the page, there's a, a place where you can click for street photography and you can see some of the stuff I have done. So, again, capturing people in public areas, streets, malls, parks, beaches, showing mood or emotion, spontaneous, unplanned, no props, no setups, candid, no eye contact that changes the mood or emotion. That's kind of like my guideline, but it, there's so many other people have difference of opinion that, you know, there's some good stuff too that's not according to this guide. So, you know, that's up to you what you, what you want to do with it. So here are the three historic videos. When we speak about street photography, it's nice to go back and look at some of the, the founders of, the, of this type of photography. And one of the names that comes up all the time is Henri Cartier-Bresson. He was born in France in 1908. He loved art and he became an excellent painter. In 1931, something happened that changed his life. One of his friends showed him a photo by a guy named of Martin Moncazi, and it shows three black kids running toward the waves. When uh, Brassant saw this, he said, "That's amazing! It's it's like an instant an instant painting." And from then on, he became a photographer. Eventually, uh, it was well off, he eventually went out and bought himself a Leica, and uh, he traveled the world. He, he, had, he actually had many war photos for Life magazine, and uh, uh, he was uh, very well respected in, uh, in photography. As a, street photography he, as a street photographer, he was noted by his excellent composition. Everything was balanced, everything had structure. And that was, uh, not many people were able to do that that followed him. Uh, he barely cropped any of his photos, but here's an exception. He saw this, uh, he saw this guy running and he knew something was going to happen. So he stuck his lens through this fence and the, lens was, the, the fence was so close together that he couldn't really look through a... Uh, his eyepiece, he couldn't really focus, so he just took the shot. And it's one of his famous shots. But after he had it uh, printed, he realized that stuff on the left-hand side was kind of out of focus, so he decided he didn't want that. And that's one of the few things he cropped. So in general, Henry Cartier-Bresson uh, took, uh, took candids most of the time. He had a few exceptions. He really didn't make any eye contact and he had fantastic photo composition. That was, to me, his uh, claim to fame. Another great in the world of street photography is Gary Winogrand. Gary was a commercial photographer, but up until, I guess he was born in 1928 and he was a commercial photographer to 1969 when he started to do street photography but he didn't like the name street photography because he took pictures of everything he had animals and zoos and uh, he had all, he had all kinds of photographers so he didn't like the term street photographer 
and uh, he was he really did like women, and he whenever he could see uh, a woman, you know, in a spontaneous situation, uh, he would take the picture. He even had a book uh, on women, and this I guess this might have been one of the covers, but he was uh, really good at it. Uh, his his favorite guys were. Walter Evans, he thought had exquisite taste, and Robert Frank. Robert Frank was more like a, a journalist. He was trying to make a statement where Winogrand just went out and took pictures. He just was out the street every single day, and uh, it just it was like a, a drug for him. He couldn't stop. In fact, uh, and he's got a lot of books out, so he's famous, and everybody likes his stuff. And when he died in 1984, he had uh, behind, he left behind 2,500 rolls of undeveloped film, 6,500 rolls of unprinted film, for approximately 300,000 unedited images. Gary Winogrand, one of the greats. This is Vivian Meyer. M-A-I-E-R up until 2009 nobody ever heard of her she was born in uh, New York City she grew up in France she worked 40 years as a nanny in Chicago she loved photography and her and her off hours as a nanny she took photos constantly but she never showed anybody any of them And she went around on the streets taking pictures of things that she liked, and her stuff is quite good. I like her stuff. And uh, one day in uh, 2009, she had a, uh, a terrible fall, fell on the ice, and didn't recuperate from that, and subsequently uh, died in 2009. And at that point, there was a fellow named... Uh, John Mayloff, he is part of the Historical Society, and he was at a storage auction and he figured he'd pick up some of these uh, uh, unprocessed uh, photos and uh, you know maybe there'd be something there of interest to him. So he took this uh, series of uh, negatives back and printed a couple and put them on the internet and in a couple days he got a like 200 requests say do more and hey I'd like to have a show at my gallery on and on and on and it turns out that her stuff was really amazing so this guy John eventually bought a bunch of different guys out and he now has 15,000 negatives 3,000 vintage prints hundreds of rolls of film home movies audio tapes and uh, he's he's got he's got a gold mine here, but but the main part of the story is that she was so good that she will be ranked. I believe she'll be ranked up with the with the greats when they when they find out her whole body of work. She was able to take pictures like this gentleman here. It it doesn't look like you know if you look at his eyes, he's not looking straight at the camera, but yet. It, it, you know, and he didn't make any changes as a result of her being there, possibly because uh, she was using a rolly flex that you look down uh, to take the picture. I don't know, but uh, Vivian Meyer, one of the, I believe, is going to be one of the greats. M A I E R, Vivian Meyer.